let's explore Halloween together. My name is Kay, and we're going to explore some trick-or-treat games. For this one, for this session, we're going to play with chance. And so um, this whole idea of trick or treat is all about a kind of a binary choice, a binary zero or one, yes or no, red or green. It's a choice between um, two different things. So in, in particular, trick or treat. Um, but that doesn't mean that we have to have only two, um, two things to choose from. What we could do is we could make them categories. So in this, in this, um, in this activity, in this art making together, what we're going to do is we're going to come up with our own rules for a game where we have two categories, trick or treat. So for this art making session, I'm going to ask if you have some paper, some mark making tools, and a mark making tool could be pencil crayons, it could be markers, it could be a pencil, it could be anything that you have that will make a mark on a page. Crayons, paint even, anything that will make a mark. And then the other thing is something called a chance object, and a chance object could be dice. <laughs> so when you throw it, you're not really sure what's going to happen. I can't guess beforehand. Six? Nope. <laughs> so this is a chance object. Another one would be a coin where you can flip the coin and you're not really sure what side it's going to turn on, uh, um, turn over on, what, what side it's going to face up. Um, and that's very much a binary object where there's only two options, heads or tails of a coin. Another chance object is a bunch of ripped up pieces of paper, right? And what you could do is you could just put a bunch of different numbers on the page. And if you don't have just one piece of paper, you already had a bunch of smaller pieces of paper. You could just write, you could write the alphabet. You could put different colors on it, whatever you want your choices to be. You could take a piece of paper and just put a, a one on one side and a zero on the other, and then just like a coin, which side of the paper is going to turn up? Okay, so this is my chance object with a bunch of just random numbers. I'm gonna shuffle them up. And then what's the, what's the number I'm gonna pull out? Ooh, one, <laughs> right? So pieces of paper can be chance objects as well. So if you can find yourself a chance object or you can make yourself a chance object, um, that's those are some of the items that I'm going to be playing with as we explore another trick or treat game by playing with chance. Okay, so when I was talking about these binary objects or binary categories of trick or treat, um, this allows us to choose between one or the other option. But we don't even have to make a list of tricks here and a list of treats here. This could just be a category. So just like when you're playing teams, like if you're playing a sports team, if you're out on the soccer team, maybe one team is called the treats and the other team is called the tricks, right? It doesn't mean that everybody on that team are a bunch of treats or a bunch of tricks. It's just a name for the category. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to just pretend that this is the trick category and this is the treat category. And we're going to come up with a couple of different things. So for me, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a motion game. I'm going to make trick or treat. If we were all sitting around in our costumes, um, hanging out together, maybe we've had a bunch of candy and now it's time to dance and move. Uh, maybe the music is playing or maybe we're, um, or maybe we're pretending to play with music or maybe we're watching the show and we just want to move around. Um, these are going to be different um, ways that we can move our body. Okay, so in the treat category, I'm going to go one, um, stamp your feet. And you can put whatever you want for each one of these. I'm going to come up with six different things on both sides. 
And the reason that I'm going to do that is because the chance object that I picked today were dice. But if you took pieces of paper and like I did at the beginning, um, you ripped up nine, you could come up with nine of each of these. If you had a coin, maybe it's just two on each of these. Whatever number that you want to put down here, um, if it correlates, if it's connected, if it has to do with the object that you're going to be using for your chance game, it allows you that when you play with these things, so playing with somebody else or even playing by yourself, there's no reason why you can't play a trick or treat game by yourself. But if you're with someone else, right, each of you can take the turn rolling the dice and picking one and then making the decision. So I'm going to keep going and I'm going to come up with a couple more. So I'm going to turn off my voice while I think and I'm going to try and fill this all out. If you are making a similar list, try to fill yours out as well. Okay, so I came up with one, two, three, four, five, six different things under my treat list all around movement. So those are my treats. I've decided since those are all going to be movement, I've decided that on my trick side, I'm still going to do movement, but these are going to be about rest. So these were about moving and being active. These are different ways that we're going to rest. All right, so I'm going to come up with here. Um, and this is just for me. Remember, you could have done these ones are about... Um, cleaning up. And this one could be about making a mess. This one could be about clapping your hands in a rhythm. This one could be about singing a line of your favorite song. This one could be putting on some article of clothing. This one could be um, making, um, making funny animal noises, right? So whatever you decide you want to do under each of these categories, it's up to you. So what am I going to do for rest? Maybe sit down. Okay, I'm going to come up with a bunch of other ones. Oops, that's okay. Remember, none of this is for keeps. So if you make a mistake, it's okay. So I said, I type, or I, sorry, I typed, I wrote lay, L-A-W, uh, but I wanted to write L-A-Y for lay down. So sit down, lay down. Okay, so those were my lists. Remember, you could come up with your own list. They could be um, Halloween themed, right? Maybe it could be dance like a bat or move like a vampire or growl like a monster. However you want to do these, it's up to you. Whatever you want to do for your instructions, you can do them. They could even be the same on both sides, but in different order, right? There are no rules except for the rules that you make up. And if you're making it up with a friend or with an ad another adult or with your classmates, maybe you can all be working together to come up with a list together because everybody's got a good idea. Okay, so what are we gonna do with our trick or treat list now? Well, maybe one way is that if we had um, a number of different people in the room with us, so I'm gonna take my map here and I'm just gonna pretend. So right now it's just me, actually it's me and my 
wizard costume friend. So I don't even need to write it down. I can just use these pieces of paper right here. And so in the room, we've got me, Kay, and we've got my wizard friend. And so whose turn is it? Well, if I had a coin, right, I've got the one side and the other side. And so what I could do is I could call heads, the side of the coin that has a head on it could be maybe my side. And the other side that has a picture that isn't a head is the wizard's side, and I can flip it. If I had my pieces of paper, I could take a one, and I could take a two, and I could shake it up in my hand, and then whichever one falls out of my hand could be who goes. You're going to want to assign it beforehand. I didn't do that, but maybe one is me and two is the wizard. But when you're using your dice, what you can do is if you have more numbers on a dice than you have choices, then what you can start to do is you can use math and figure out um, how to divide e the, the, the total number on the dice by the number of people that you have in the room. And so for me, I have um, a maximum number of six sides on any of these dice. So when you have a cube dice like this, it, it's um, a, die, a die six. It's always going to have um, a maximum number is six on these. And so what is six divided by two? The answer is three. So that means that three of those sides I could assign to me and three of those sides I could assign to the wizard. Let's take, let's take a pad to show you what I mean. So I said one, two, three, four, five, six. And I said that divided six divided by two, right? So this is one, and this is two. It means that one, two, three of the numbers and one, two, three of the numbers, right? So six divided by two was three. And so K, 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 wizard, wizard, wizard. So now, all of a sudden, I don't even need a binary object. I can take my die six or a die 20 or, um, whatever die that I have that has multiple sides on it. Um, and then I can make this kind of key here of which options when it rolls up on the dice, whose turn it is. So let's do that. I'm going to take this die. And if it's a one, two or three, it's me. If it's a four five or six, it's a wizard. Oop. I'm going to roll again so you can see what happened. There you go. Three. So it's me because I rolled a three. It's my turn. All right. So that's step one where we figured out whose turn it is. Next, let's find out if we're going to play a trick or a treat. So same as before, what we could do is we could take our um, six divided by two and make it so that one, two, three, any, if I rolled a one, two, or three, it was a trick. And if I rolled a four, five, or six, it could be a treat. And so let's roll that out. Six. So I'm going to pick from the treat list because four, five, or six was a treat. All right. So now I get to roll one more time. But this time I don't have to do any math because I have one, two, three, four, five, six options on my treat side. It's based on my, my die. And I can stamp my feet. Right? And then you can go back and forth playing the game and make or, or encourage the people who are playing the game with you to do the action that you wrote down on either the trick or the treat. You can play this game with lots of different people. You could play this game with the same people over and over again by just coming up with a different key for each time. So it could still be trick or treat, but for the next one, you could put down... Um, uh, the, the different ideas. So um, remember I had said the, the different uh, monster moves, the different Halloween moves, or 
maybe the number of claps that you do on your hand. So you're trying to make a song all together by the number of times that you clap hands around the room. So this is just another way that we can play a trick or treat game without needing to go out and um, knock on people's doors. We can still have fun and play trick or treat together.